Hey Siri, Alexa, okay Google. Now if I just triggered some sort of technology in your house, then you are a part of a massive technological makeover that we are only just starting to understand. Yes, today we are digging into the creepy, curious, and crazy world of smart home tech. Before we get into the video, yes, we should probably warn you that if you have certain devices around your house, they may get triggered throughout the course of this video. You have been warned. Now, smart home tech looks very different because there's lots of different products coming on the market every single day, but it's just the latest iteration of a trend towards automation that's been going on for well over a hundred years. From the Hoovers of the early 20th century to washing machines to dishwashers, the human race has long been dead set on making our home lives as hassle-free as possible. I'm honestly pretty sure that if we had our way, we wouldn't even have to look at a dirty dish or sock, let alone clean it. The 2010s proved to be a critical decade in terms of paving the way forward to this supposedly chore-free future. The iPhone 4S came out with voice integration in 2011, and as you might remember, it sucked. More often than not, Siri had no clue what you were saying, and it would be just way easier for you to carry out the commands yourself like a normal person, but it felt like such a futuristic novelty, something our grandparents could never even dream of, that it was hard not to become entranced. Oh my God. <laughs> Siri, call 911. I'm not sure I got that. Siri! Now, I don't know how many of us fully grasped just where all of this was heading in the beginning. Because just a few years later, a whole bunch of things happened all at once that would start to totally overhaul modern domestic life. In 2014, Amazon released its first Echo. Apple launched the HomePod where you could control household devices all from one app. And Google brought out Nest, a smart home tech company whose devices learns from your commands. All the horses came out the gate at the same time and it's only been eight years, but I think it's safe to say that uh, things have gotten pretty out of control. A smart home can take a lot of different forms, but the basic idea is that certain appliances, lights, thermostats, water bottles, you name it, are set up in such a way that they can be controlled or monitored remotely via internet connection in what is known as the Internet of Things or IoT. Most of you watching this video have probably interacted with an Alexa or a Google Home at some point and had them play music or turn on some disco lights for you. But most of us have yet to fully experience the extent to which these devices can run our lives. So let me take you on a theoretical journey in a hypothetical world that is, yes, still 100% possible today. You wake up in the morning in your rest smart bed, which senses your movements and adjusts its firmness according to your body weight and sleeping position, all the while not disturbing your slumbering partner next to you. Without even opening your eyes, you croak out a, hey Google, good morning, which then turns on the lights in your house, but not in your bedroom because Google knows your wonderful partner doesn't start work for a couple more hours and it starts running your shower for you. Of course, Google knows your voice by now, so the shower will be the exact right temperature. And by the time you're squeaky clean, your coffee is hot and ready to go brewed to your exact liking. But it's not over yet. When you and your partner are both leaving for work, your thermostat automatically turns your heat or AC off. And partway through the day, you get a notification that oh, there's a water leak. So your system connects you to a plumber who you are able to get into your house by your smartphone. By the time you get home, the leak is fixed, your house is back to normal and it's a comfortable temperature and you can rest easy knowing that nobody broke in while you were away because your Astro would have caught it. These are all just a few things that a smart home can do today, but there are thousands of devices that can be connected to these networks. Within a decade, we're gliding terrifyingly from, hey Siri, tell me a joke, to, hey Google, can you monitor and regulate basically every aspect of my life? Uh-oh. Don't tell me. We're about to go over a huge waterfall. Yep. Sharp rocks at the bottom? Most likely. Bring it on. Booyah! Now, if you are like me, you just went through that whole imaginary journey scenario with a lot of conflicting emotions. There is something innately dystopian and creepy about this movement. I feel like we've been warned about this thing in like every science fiction movie ever. But I also can't deny that there's at least a part of me that kind of loves the idea of a self-adjusting bed that reads you a bedtime story when you can't get to sleep. It's not 
too hard to find some kind of childlike wonder at how far technology has come, even just in my lifetime. That fascination with and craving for the next greatest thing is a huge reason why smart home tech has done so well in recent years. It's like the epitome of everyday consumer products that scratch that new fandangled tech itch. But their continued and ever increasing popularity is based on three main selling features. So let's go over those. The most obvious selling point here is convenience. God, we just want things to be convenient. The more automated your life, theoretically, the more time you save by not having to do those pesky household tasks like vacuuming, printing, and God forbid, turning on the lights. According to one survey, more than half of Americans admitted that smart home devices saved a half an hour of time per day, which ends up being like a few hours a week. And that was in 2015, and things have only become more convenient since then. Then there's the sort of dual-pronged financial environmental promises. Smart homes are marketed as eco-friendly, energy-efficient, cost-effective ways of running your home, and there is some truth to this. One of the best-selling and practical IoT devices is the smart thermostat, which learns from your behavior, creates a schedule based on it, and then automatically adjusts the heat or temperature of your home depending on what you're doing and whether you're in the house or not. Heating our homes is one of the largest sources of CO2 emissions globally, accounting for half of the total global energy consumption. The more efficient that we can be with that, the better. Combine this automated heating system with the fact that insurance companies sometimes reduce fees for homes with smart security systems, and a household could save a hundred plus dollars a month after plugging their home into the network. But for all these sparkling promises, the majority of people are still reportedly a little disturbed by the rise in smart devices. In a 2019 survey, 63% of respondents claimed that they found this kind of tech to be, quote, creepy. And yet 69% owned at least one of these devices. Uh, yeah, it's just like we're wandering into the mouth of the tiger and we're like, I don't know if this seems like a good idea. <laughs> it seems that we already have a bit of an unhealthy love-hate relationship with homes that can talk to us, but what's actually behind those fears and are they justified? Did you hear about that viral story about a decade ago where Target knew that a daughter was pregnant before the dad did? This uncanny knowledge of our needs and wants is something that a lot of people get weirded out by, even going so far to imply that the technology in our pockets are listening to us. The Watchers! They're gonna kill all of us! They're gonna kill all of us! Now we all sign those disclaimers on social media without reading it, and we know that privacy is a really big deal right now, but I am going to summarize the social dilemma here and just say, oh God. It is so much worse than you think. The truth is, nobody really knows the extent to which companies are harvesting personal data and what they're doing with it, and the home tech wave is the penultimate manifestation of this trend. In a smart home setting, companies are able to collect continuous information on every aspect of your lifestyle and then send that data to who knows how many third parties. Between the deliberately vague and honestly incomprehensible terms of service, minimal privacy laws, and the very real possibility of hacking, it's pretty much impossible to know what exactly is being done with the video footage, audio data, and and more that your devices are collecting. But perhaps more concerning is the amount of control you surrender when you adopt a smart home system, especially when this tech is in its infancy. And I'm not making this up. From the beginning, smart home tech has been riddled with bugs that have left people's home security vulnerable to simple hacks or firmware updates that have left locks inoperable or server outages that have left customers literally in the dark, unable to turn on their own lights. Now, of course, as the industry progresses, they're ironing out the kinks and things are going to get better. But the fact remains that connecting your entire life and home to the internet means that you are going to become dependent on the internet to do the basic things that you do in your life. It's a paradox. Just a year ago, a news story came out about a Texas power company that remotely raised the heat on customers' smart thermostats to save energy, which might not be the most serious breach imaginable, but you can sort of imagine the possibility for these abuse cases to get 
more and more black mirror-y. And speaking of which, we are not even going to delve into China's questionable enforcement of smart locks in certain regions and their use of technology to monitor, rate, and blacklist civilians. This tech is extremely powerful, enabling a person to watch, track, and even lock up a person remotely with horrifying implications for anyone living under the power of another person, such as those in an unhealthy, abusive relationship, whether that's at a government or interpersonal level, it is not something that you want in the wrong hands. And as we have seen with the internet, it's already in the wrong hands. So this has been depressing, awful, scary perhaps, and you're looking cautiously at your Google Home with a bit of skepticism. It's basically just a speaker, right? What's the problem here for me? The reality is that the Google Home and the personal assistants are the first and most important step in this master plan. Once we are all familiar with the Google Home or whatever, it only makes sense for us to add further tech into this web in order to maximize its potential. Maybe a self-brushing toothbrush would be completely unnecessary and even dangerous, but if your house is already set up and you have Alexa right there to get it started, maybe I like getting my teeth brushed by a robot. We are still in the early stages of the smart home takeover and no one can say with any certainty just what the internet of things is doing to our brains and communities. But we can make some educated guesses that it's probably going to prioritize profits over our well-being because that's what the internet has done so far. There is no denying that we're rapidly transitioning into this increasing smart world, whether we like it or not, though. According to one estimate, 11.3 billion IoT devices were connected in 2021, and that number is expected to almost triple by 2030. It is a futile task to try and prevent the smart takeover. Most of you are probably even watching this video on a smart device, but maybe we can do without some of the negative side effects we already know are possible if we just think about things a little teensy bit. We need to look back at some of the last technological advances and see what they have done to us. We're more technologically advanced and connected than ever, and yet witnessing such an intense rise in loneliness and mental illness that it's becoming its own epidemic. How we feeling out there tonight? <laughs> yeah, I am not feeling good. Home tech as a trend, perhaps more than any other, is built on this incessant craving for more convenience. How often do we flock to these devices just to avoid thinking about our lives, you know? To organize our schedule, to purchase household items, to save half a second switching on a light switch, or to find a song, or to brew our coffee. We're doing all of these things without a thought as to whether or not this convenience is actually benefiting our well-being. I personally find that doing the dishes or folding the laundry is a welcome escape from the technologically mediated life that I find myself in so often. I look forward to those mundane things to ground myself as I find that if I have a free moment and my device is anywhere nearby, I'll be on it scrolling before I even realize it's happening. So hopefully the irony that you've watched this video on a smart device hasn't ruined the overall message and that this didn't depress you so much that you don't wanna subscribe and like the video. But if you are subscribed, then we will definitely see you in the next one or whenever your home security footage gets leaked.